check this out. Wiping the camera off with my dirty shirt. Of course it's a dirty shirt. I don't even believe I'm back here. Doing the same exact thing again. I don't even believe I'm wearing a shirt. It's like 10 degrees outside today. It will work on the lighting, I promise. Oh, look. That is the perfect position. Today has been brought to you by coffee. It's, thank you. It's, uh, it's Van Houten's, Van Houten's, uh, uh, vanilla hazelnut, I think that's what this one is. And in the last week, I've made a helmet. I've repaired two helmets. I even posted a couple pictures online of the remaking, readjusting of the faces. This is like the number one complaint people get about their helmet is they can't breathe, can't see, it's touching my nose, or I was wondering if you could make this better. Just as a general, make this better, make it fit better for me. So, actually, where's that one I made the other day? I moved it. Now I can't find it. Oh, it's right here. I need to check something. Oh, I made this last week for somebody. They didn't even know I finished it. It was way too long in the coming. But I found the other parts to it. Oh, where'd I put that baggie? I found the other parts to it. We're gonna see if we can't incorporate all of the things. But I messed this up a long time ago. Here's chain mail, and here's a piece of leather I made with a painting and some runic words on it. But I, I couldn't figure out for the life of me how to attach the chain mail to the helmet in a way that was satisfying and pleasing to look at. And I messed up with trying to make copper um, chain link or chain mail links. So I'm going to cut them off. I'm going to cut them off, drill holes, and I do have another thing I'm going to try, but the last time I did this, it sent me spinning, like, in a bad way when it came to making armor. It was like, could not handle failing at this. Some things came up, I haven't been making armor since. Maybe a couple of small ones, but this thing, I do want to keep this thing, because I don't want to remake it. It's a nice piece of leather, veg tan, perfect chain mail. I want to make it so that the chain mail is somewhat removable. And these have holes. Okay, I don't need this anymore. This is chain mail. This is the top. And let's see if we have any baddies. So this has to come out. Let's see. It's brand new chain mail. It's fantastic. Whoever made this, it's a riveted chain mail, so it's going to last longer than uh, um, not riveted. <laughs> Do it butted. Butted chain mail is good for one thing. Looking at and this, we're going to make sure that this is a uh, good enough to fight in if they want to fight using this helmet. Oh, 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 excuse me. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to make a gazillion holes in this thing. I need to be able to finish this helmet so that I can overcome my mental obstacles that are preventing me from feeling satisfied with making stuff. I don't expect satisfaction when I make things. I don't, I don't think I need to make things. I enjoy it. But if I'm going to make things, I want to feel like accomplished 
and making it. So now we're crocheting it. And these holes are big enough. They're way too big. What's in the drill? That's way too big. Let's find a smaller drill bit. So those are these. That's a little big. Let's get another drill bit. Oh boy. Back to the million drill bit box. This one's about the right size. It's used. Should go there. I'm going to change my drill bit. La, 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 la. You know what I need? I need to play background music when I stream, but royalty free background music from Kevin McLeod or someone else. I need one of those old fashioned CD players because. I have a number of people who have let me use their music for YouTube purposes. And let's do this so you can see what I'm doing. Whoa! Almost lost it there. Check it out. Tripod, epic failure. Okay. No crochet, no you no, not yet. Only drilling. You can't see it, my little welding machine is in between the camera and my leg. I swear one of these days I'm going to organize this shop a little better. This is just the most unorganized it's ever been. So I know I'm lying when I say that. I'm not going to organize it any better. Just the thought of having to move would stress me out so much. Like, I don't even know how to pack up the shop. I'd have to get a garage sized trailer and then fill that. Ow! I just literally pinched my finger. You know what? I have a complaint, a legitimate complaint. They don't make drills for left-handed people. They don't make a lot of tools for left-handed people. Do we just not complain enough? Lefty lives matter, man. Mm. Oh yeah, look at that. Drilling so much easier than punching holes. I think I punched the first 20 holes or eight or whatever it was. But my day was so good today. I really enjoyed everything I got to do. And somehow I got out of driving the kids to kids club tonight. That was fantastic. Gives me time to do these things that I should have done a long time ago. What is it? about being demotivated. I gotta watch all these YouTube videos forever and there be like some interesting people that are so motivated to do many things. Many, many, many things. And they're encouraging on their YouTube videos. But it's disarming. Because when I watch them do their craft or hobby or whatever it is they're working on, usually watch building things like how to make this, how to do that. I have been defeated by watching ambitious people accomplish what they set out to do that day on video and felt encouraged. But just watching them was satisfaction enough to not do what I feel I want to do when I talk about it. Like if someone were to ask me, what do you want to do tonight? Oh, I'd love to come home and make some armor. You know how many times I've said that and never actually done it? So many things get in the way. I gotta go to the scrapyard. I've been putting off a trip to the scrapyard for about three weeks. I got a car full of scrap right now. I got a Jetta Zatch, just full of scrap metal. Oh, look, now I have a series of holes that a crochet needle that I have selected for the job. Thanks, Mom. Will fit through each and every one of them. Even that one. 
a little wonky. Doesn't affect it too much. It looks like I plan to drill those holes there. Coffee. It's cold in here. I think it's going to be... I think it's going to be in the negative again today. Mm. Okay, so I have here... This is nylon... Waxed nylon uh, thread. It's for uh, leather working. Veg tan stitching. Well, not just veg tan stitching, but anything. And uh, I actually got this at a leather shop in Hamilton. Tundra leather. Go there for all your leather needs. Where's... Oh, there. Here's a camille. I might want to sit down for this. I'm going to sit down. Look. I'm going to sit on my stump. Oh, and then see if I can't start to do this. You know what I need to do? I need to make sure this fits. I need to make sure this fits on the helmet. And I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. Just gonna, here we go. A gazillion hair. Oh. Small side center. And side back center. Beautiful helmet. It's too bad it covers up so much of the bar draw. And it just fell past the helmet. like this with the strap on top riveted through here from side to side and then the face can be completely open oh, can you see it you can still see the bar drill then and the chain mail will drape around nicely the chain mail drape will drape around nicely and the chain will pick up its own curve Sitting on the wearer. I like that. Where does this sit now? This is supposed to be just for the back. And I never made it too big. There's a center mark. One of the letters is the center. And then this would wrap around like this. Also, somewhat short. Maybe I should have made it longer. No, I, I keep questioning myself too much. And this is, this is the problem with like these ones. I'm just constantly questioning myself. Why is that? I'm sure other people, I've heard that artists do that with their paintings and stuff. Question whether or not it's good enough, question their own skills and whether or not what they're doing is worth Especially if they sell their stuff. I don't sell too much things. I almost sell nothing. I have a hard time receiving money from people sometimes, especially when it comes to armor. That looks all right. That gives some nice character on the back of the helmet. I'm gonna put that on there. I'm gonna stitch this to this. I'm going to mark the holes before I stitch the things. So if this is the center, this is going to be a hole. 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 All right. So those are holes for this. One, two, three, four. Okay, helmet down. I 
This is the back center. And this is the back bottom. I've never done this before. So forgive me, please. If it looks like I don't know what I'm doing. I really don't. But I have crocheted before and I have stitched an awful lot of things. But uh Let's see, how would I start this? One link? Maybe. I'm just gonna tie a knot in the end of this piece. This is gonna help for this. Cause it's not like stitching through a thread, I would pull it straight. Okay. <laughs> I got that Bo Burnham song stuck in my head. And let's do this in a somewhat broken down. Let's make it out of two pieces of this. Ah, here we go. Oh no. Let me put this down here. Okay. Let's fix this. This here, and I can put it through the chain nails first. Ah, oh, yeah, here we go. And I will not tie knots in this, but I will wrap it. Maybe I should tie a knot in every loop. I don't know what the proper name for that is, but. What's the, uh, what's it called when somebody has to stitch somebody up? Like literally stitch their skin back together. Mm. A tourniquet? Is that the name of the knot or just uh, what they do? gonna take a lot longer than I thought it was. <sighs> time. The gift of time. Not spent with the person, but the time spent on something you give that person. This is never always understood. start this and I think I have a pretty good idea how I want to carry on making this wax nylon this is what I remember about using wax nylon string if you pull it too tight and slide your finger down it like you can get cut I have been cut by this string before but it's nylon is very strong, like a bull. I know a guy, we call him bull. He's not strong, he's just fat, really fat, like a bull. So over, let's go through here, and then through here. Oh, this is gonna take forever. Ah, I friggin' knew it. There might be a better way to hold this. Let me figure that out and then we can probably speed this up a little bit. Not that either. Oh yeah, here we go, here we go, here we go again. Girls, what's my weakness? Men. That's the song that gets stuck in my head when I say, here we go. Time. I say, here we go. That's how you know you have a very popular song. 
Good artists have catchy lines. Good cars have catchy lines. Cool cars have cool headlights. So cool that you recognize those headlights when you see the car coming in next. Well, that's two down. How many did I make? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Well, maybe it'll go a little faster. Now that I have got this process down and it's started. I had, oh, what did I do? I was saying this the other, well, today to somebody actually. I was at work and then I mentioned something that I was doing in the past and I was dreading every step I took to fixing it in accomplishing it because everything I, every single piece I took off, I knew I had to put back on. Um, it was uh, not the most incredible experience having to do something so tedious that you had to do a million of them and then put them back on. Will I cut myself? I don't know. Oh man, are you kidding me? have these um, hangouts sometimes. Some of the ladies have gotten together and done like a little knitting club or a stitching, like seamstressing stuff. And they call it stitching bitches because that's what they do uh, apparently. I have a feeling wine is involved though, but I don't ever want to go to that. I can make metal do anything. I'm convinced of it. Eventually, I can make it do whatever I want, even if I gotta melt it. But with material, I have a very difficult time doing that. Because feeding material through a sewing machine is the hardest thing in the world. Husqvarna, take note. I'm encouraging you to make a better machine. That's all. I'm not complaining. I'm trying to encourage you, man. Oh boy. I'm a 25% done. There we go. It's going a little bit faster now. Stitch this whole thing up. Hopefully it lines up nicely. Every link lines up to a hole already, so that's good. I did eyeball it. So the uh, accuracy of my eyeball is what we're going by here. Yeah. Accuracy of my eye. I, I always say this too at work, even when we're fabricating something out of metal. And I messed up before in the past too. And I used to make everything level, square, and true, and put a, a square on it and a 90 angles and a level. And I kept finding that. No matter how level I made things, they didn't always look straight and true. What I found is that there's, especially while hanging or running pipe, you want piping to look nice when you're done, especially if you're getting paid the big bucks in the factory to hang it. Don't use a level for Pete's sake, because the building you're running pipe through, the beams you're running pipe on, or next to pipe that's already there that also looks straight. If you put yours on that's level and true to the ground and the earth, it's gonna look off sometimes, most of the time. So you need to do it by eye so it looks like it's straight because you never know what the last person did. They probably just did it to make it look, look straight to the building. But it doesn't mean 
that is level. So by eye is not a bad way of making something look good. I've been very fortunate to not have too many mess ups for making things level. I did once put a, uh, I built a steel cage around a pickup truck, uh, around the box to hold, uh, like shipping material and stuff. It was like a extended back rack with a top section and it just bolted into the stake pockets. But I used the level on every step of it. And I started on one corner and I went to the other side and I moved forward and I moved to the other side. And by the time I got to the center stake pocket, I believe it was the center. By the time I got to the center stake pocket, I was still using the level, but I didn't count on all the weight that I was putting on the car or on the truck. So I put probably 300 pounds of metal on it. And in doing so, the look of the first and the second or first and the last beam were way off. Even though when I put the first one on, it was level. By the time I put all the weight on it, it was lower in the back of the truck, maybe half an inch, right? Maybe a little bit more, maybe one inch, even if it was one inch, that's one inch on the bottom, but the angle was way out. It was like 12 or 13 degrees. I swear it was very bad. And, uh, you know, I was working by myself and that's not really an excuse, but had I have somebody at the time prior to welding it all in place, mentioned that, Hey man, that looks a little crooked. I would have stopped and tried to figure it out before I was done. That was probably the last thing that I ever did 100% with a level. If you're running a pipe down a beam and you put a level on the beam and the beam is perfect and you check your surroundings before you put the pipe down it, then it's probably okay and safe to use a level, but. Oh, and you definitely wanna do use a level or uh, one of those angle levels you can adjust the angle to for piping, drainage. That's always, that's necessary too, but for fabricating something that looks just for looks, man, eyeball it. You don't, you don't hang pictures in your house with a level, or maybe you do, but uh, if you do, chances are it might not look level. Okay, so I got half this stitched up. I'll pull all my stitches tight maybe. like they're a little bit big for what I'm doing but I don't have any thicker nylon okay and originally the holes were supposed to be for copper copper rivets that I was making and could not for the life of me handle that those rivets are now well whatever ten of them are all over my garage floor I don't want to make it too tight that it will uh, break, but I think it'll be just fine. Tying this like a person's finger. Oh, my back has been hurting from work all day, and I just want to take it easy. And it is encouraging me to stop what you're doing. My body is literally telling me, stop what you're doing. You work too hard today. You need to take a break. But I know if I do that, I'm just going to end up sitting there playing Call of Duty. 
should be fun. I got friends on there. Call of Duty was definitely my, uh, I said this before, I know it. It was definitely my, uh, social, um, somewhat extroverted, I would say. It's safe to say that. Anyone that knows me knows I am. It's, uh, how I was able to make it through COVID. Essentially unscathed, I think. I mean, I am just talking to myself in a garage. I think. So, yeah, that's the thing. Let's see here. <clears throat> there we go. Tighten the knot. Is that it? Is that a good knot? I think that's a good knot. Yeah, that's a good knot. And the, the good thing about this nylon string, it doesn't break very easily. Let's cut this off here. Cool. Now, that's half of it done. This, this is side got a loop. This side has the loop. Look at that. Let's start on this side then. <clears throat> Looks good. Looks all right. I mean, not great. But neither do I. I look just fantastic. I feel I look like I feel. There we go. Side two. And then I'm going to put the rivets in the helmet. Then grab the other piece and see what I can do to make it Fancy and all the pretties. Jack, you make the pretties. I said, I know. You make the pretties for me. Yes. And I failed. This has been the hardest helmet in the world for me to make. This is so ridiculous. I feel like it, when I finish this helmet, there should be some sort of relief, like a burden of commitment that I finally made. And, I couldn't before, but oh no, I put that through the wrong. Put it in the wrong hole. Here we go. Let's try again. I feel almost like something's gonna stop me from finishing this too. Just kind of get that feeling. I hope nothing will stop me. This has been the home stretch for so long. Come on. Come on. Oh, here we go. Ah, oh, yeah. Okay. That'll work. Let's see. You know what would stop this side from working out nicely? Is if these holes didn't line up with the rivets. Oh, I think they're going to, though. So I fought every week for the last few weeks for the first time at a fight practice consistently in years. And I don't know if I was really good before or if I just remembered everything pretty well because I'm like... I feel like I'm experiencing memories when I fight. Like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do in this situation. This is what I'm supposed to do in this situation. But it's like I'm teaching myself, and it's kind of nice. It's like remembering it at the same time. It helps if you've done it before, obviously, but... Come on, come on, come on. I always want to just be as good as I was before. And I know that took a lot of work. That was like, I would fight practice three times a week. Sometimes, maybe a couple of times we did two weeks worth of uh, fight practice or like a, a one whole week and then another one whole week. And just went to a different place in a different city. That was because I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be very good. And then I got...
to a point where I was satisfied with. It's like beating uh, a really difficult game. You get to a point where you're satisfied with your skill level, and then you stop. When the reward system stops paying off, like in your head, you know, you play a video game, they give you a desire. They create the desire. Then they make it achievable by saying, you have to do this. And then you you start to do this activity, and then you are rewarded. And then they say, well, you have to do this again, but this time you have to do it more, or it's going to be harder. And then you do it, and it's harder and more challenging. And you continue to do this. I know some people that were uh, farming gold in that game, uh, Sea of Thieves, and I was watching them occasionally. And they were really grinding out, trying to be the best in the world, grinding the gold. And the game changed a bit, and it was discouraging for them, I think. And there was other people competing against it. But all they were doing was, was trying to make more gold for their accounts to make it to number one. And I understand competitiveness. But I don't know if I could do that much repetitiveness to be competitive. I would much rather have something that was skill-based. Can't, uh... And the World of Warcraft stuff from back in the day. People would grind for, like, 16 hours a day. How would you even, like... How do you even play for 16 hours a day of World of Warcraft? I heard a story about a guy, I don't know him very well, but I know who it is, that he typed in, in World of Warcraft slash play... If you type in slash play, it tells you how many play hours you've done since you since you started a game. All your characters, everything on your account since day one. And they typed in slash play, and it came up with 365 days. And that's just straight play time. Right? That's not like anything else. And when I heard that story, I thought like that was the end of even me playing it. And what I heard was he had shut it off and never played it again. I don't know if he still has never played it again. It can be a fun game with friends. And I suspect that he probably had a lot of friends on there, which is why he played so much. It would have been his little social outing when he comes home and he gets to go somewhere like Azeroth. Unless he was Horde. Sinner. But yeah, that can be an interesting escape. Give you a goal, gives you a little bit of satisfaction. But then when you get so far, that satisfaction never pays off. There's no depth to the satisfaction. It just becomes more of the same. And when your brain receives that blast of whatever it is, serotonin, for accomplishing a goal that you set out to do, then there's no substance beyond that. It's just the same. It's just more of the same. And then more of the same. And then more of the same. Oh, no, no, no. There we go. I don't know if that's the same with making armor. I think that there is a slight reward in my brain when I finish a project. And I feel accomplished, but it's not the eternal feelings of satisfaction because everything dies. And even the metal I work with will rust away. And a lot of it probably sooner than I'm even going to be alive. Whoa. We're getting a little bit dark and morbid here. This is YouTube. This is supposed to be fun, happy, happy, fun, joy. Welcome to post-COVID Jack. <laughs> oh, look, here we go. We've finished this. This part right here. Oh my goodness, let's wrap this up. I'm gonna put this on top of this. There's quite a bit left. 
and I frequently use it. Let's taste that coffee to see how cold it is. Hmm. That's not good anymore. That's not good. So that came out pretty nice. I'm happy with that. If someone was fighting with this on a field, there's no, no force uh, will be able to separate this. Not sure. Something could, but right now, Let's go back to the helmet and see what we need to do here. Occasionally when I sit here, I can hear the kid across the street playing basketball by himself. I don't want to play basketball with him. But I do hear him. He must love it. When I was a kid, there was a certain age where I would play racquetball up against the building with a paddle and a racquetball by myself. Just to waste time. We never had online video games and I didn't have the tools or skills to do this kind of stuff. This looks pretty good. Something's missing. I feel like something's missing off the sides here. Ugh. Feels like something's missing for sure. How would we do that? We could. So look me up. I do want that bar grill exposed. Hmm. 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 What I could do is drill the holes in the helmet and then temporarily attach it and then I will see what I can do to attach the front of the, the front of the helmet. I can actually just wrap even the nylon around the bar grill. I have seen that, but I feel like there's something missing in this space. We'll figure that out in the artistic part of this problem solving. Let's see. Let's go back over here. Let's do this. Four holes. Locate. Center punch. Center punch? Where is center punch? Well, this is not a center punch, but it will do. Almost swung when I wasn't ready. Four. Four. That makes a great center punch. That's super hard material. Probably going to explode and smash into me one day. Wrong drill bit. Remind me to buy another drill and an angle grinder. Seriously. I would like to buy another drill and angle grinder. Because then I won't have to switch my blade. And I won't have to... Switch my buffing pad and my, that's the burnt one. I don't have to switch my drill bit so much. Definitely need two. I did have two grinders. I mentioned this before, but I burnt one out working on the St. Lawrence 2. St. Lawrence 2 Brigantine. Stanley School for Youth, not for profit organization. Donate money, spend your time. How to sail today. There we go. Look at how quick this can be. This is so awesome. When your drill bit sharp and you 
have all the tools available. I don't think that one's got a burr. When I have a dr uh, dull drill bit, I notice that uh, I get a bigger burr. Almost like pick it off. My fingers are biting, I see. Yeah, I don't know if you can even see that. Doesn't matter. With the sharp drill bit, I get a smaller burrs on the inside. Where's that? See, I've already got holes in it. And my friend Jake came over and I fixed his bar grill up a bit better so he could see it. And he left me some rivets from Tundra Leather. Get your leather now. They should pay me for this. Every time I mention their name, I want $25 in store credit. <laughs> that wouldn't get me much. I know leather is very expensive. Every time I go in there, uh, see, see those guys. Is there one more for? I uh, end up spending like 150 bucks sometimes. Like, even just a pack of rivets like this is $25, $30. But I need them. And it was nice, Jake went down there, picked up some supplies before he came over, told him I didn't have anything. Put this right here. Take one. Let's go. All right, let's go. This is gonna make the moment so much more difficult. How am I gonna do this again? Oh, I forget. I wanna put this on the inside or the outside. Couple rivets inside, flat section on the outside. What would look better? Mm. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna put the washers on the outside. Just cause. Just cause. Which means I need to hold something inside. Inside. That'll work. And it's heavy enough. It's the hunk of metal on the inside. Let's see if I can do all this with one hand. Ow! <clears throat> Here we go. Now the toolbox I put my foot on is probably going to fall. Because I'm doing this here, just like this, this one time. Oh, well, better now than later. Okay, let's see. How do I hit this? If I gotta hold these three things at the same time. Hmm. See if that works. Oh my gosh. Nope. You know what we're going to do? This is not going to work this way. We're going to know it now. This bell sander has been in a perfect location for a couple weeks now. But let's just temporarily. Oh my gosh. I forgot how heavy it was. It's gonna die, hold on. Oh, right there. Don't accidentally turn it on. Put this in here. Okay, and then. Okay. Will this be good? This will be good. Okay, let's try this again. This way. Oh, it's gonna droop. It's gonna droop. Literally, I'm just wedging things under this at this point.
into it on that. Go in the angle. This is perfect. What can I shove in there? That's rock. That will break. This is wood. Maybe that. And I don't want to get this all dirty. Let's put, that's not paper. I had some scrap paper here. What's this? Oh, a heater. I've got a million sheets of paper over there in the drawer. Give me a second to get the paper. I don't get this thing dirty. Put the old, the old bent Estewing hammer. It's actually bent on one side, and I couldn't fix it. And I spent a lot of money on this, and I even profiled one side, like I do all my new hammers. But I bent it from regular use, and I was quite frustrated. So now I just buy wooden handle ones because the handle won't bend. It'll just break off. And then the handle is much cheaper than buying a new S-Wing hammer. And I like these, I really do. I have a framing S-Wing hammer and it's my favorite. And that has not bent yet, but ever since I bent that one, I've been very cautious with uh, using it. I lost the helmet. Oh, here it is. Chain mail and the clean stuff. Where's that piece? There we go. Literally just drilled a hole in this because I can't find my leather tool the other day. I think I brought it to work. I do bring tools home and to work quite frequently. I don't have two of everything yet, but it would be fantastic to have like two of everything. Remember, thickness of a quarter. <clears throat> My friend Christie's dad told me that. He's a good guy. Showed me how to do this the first time. And then I had to relearn how to do copper rivets. Probably five or six times. Mostly because people wanted to show me how to do the copper rivets because I wasn't doing them good enough. I do have the tool here with the dimples on it like this. but I want to leave it marred a little bit. Yeah, I want to leave it like that. Looks more uh, homemade. Rivet number two. Two million rivets. Oh. I think it would have been kind of neat if I kept track of how many rivets I put in. But, uh, let's see here. Putting a rivet in, putting a rivet in. This is riveting, isn't it? Riveting content on YouTube. Where are the cutters? Further over. 
Here we go. Okay. Two more rivets of the copper. <sighs> Taking my time. What's that song? Taking my time back home. Something, something. It's going wrong. I think. Oh. Hmm. There we go. I am probably the worst person in the world if I went to karaoke and try to sing some of the songs that I think I know. It's a scary thing to sing in front of other people, but I don't care anymore what people think. It's scary singing karaoke, and it's even worse when you stand up there and you're singing, and then you uh, realize that you don't know any of the words to that song you picked, because you thought you knew, and you find yourself not singing along with somebody, but humming words at karaoke you never even thought you learned. No. Don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Something, something, something feeling. Or living on a bread. Living on bread? What? Living on a pear. That's what it is. It's not living on bread. It's living on a pear. Stay. That old dude, pig. That old dude. Am I running into a problem here? Is this going to fit around? Oh no, God. No, no, I'm running into a problem. This helmet, no, I'm not going to drill that out because it'll burn the leather. Oh, God. oh yeah, there we go. Okay, we got this. We're good. Um, this is over here. Let's sit here for a second. We're not running into problems. We are running into happy little accidents. Bob probably never made armor in his life. No such thing as accidents. Mistakes? What is it? Happy little accidents? What did he say? Bob said, no such thing as a mistake and happy little accidents. Happy little trees. Very encouraging sounding guy. Quite a following. I mean, I still watch Bob Ross. He came out on Netflix a little while ago. I must have watched half of the episodes they put up. Again, that's one of those things where it's encouraging to watch, but also disables you and disarms you from doing it. Some people go out and paint after watching Bob Ross. I sit there satisfied with the painting he painted. That's what I would do. And I did. I actually only ever painted like two paintings with Bob Ross uh, on his show. They turned out nice. Uh, they're hanging on the wall upstairs. It was a fun little exercise. Uh, look at that. I didn't ever think I was going to get this far. Like this. Hmm. Oh, 
な。I lost my voice last week, Thursday, at St. Patty's Day. And it was not an Irish band playing on St. Patty's Day. Oddly enough, it was a cover band. They were really good, mind you. But it was not what I expected when I walked in. Had I known, I would have been more prepared. <laughs> oh, where do I want this chainmail to go? I know where the eyes need to see. Oh, here and here. That's exactly where I want it. Just like this. That's, that's where I want this. I want this to come right to the front like this. And I want to... Have it just like that. I don't want to cover the eyes. I need it to go over the face a little bit. But I want enough visibility so that this is a practical fighting helmet. Always the goal. Practical, well fit, fighting helmet. Look, I can put two holes here. Oh, maybe I should put two smaller holes here. Two smaller holes for thread. I'm not gonna rivet into chain mail onto metal. I'm gonna wrap some more of this uh, nylon thread around it. How high do you need to be to support this? Halfway up, let's see. Should it go under the nose? Excuse me. What looks better, that or under the nose? Mm. What is my chisel? That'll work. Right there. Yeah, that's good. Under the nose. So that the eye lines are clear and this needs to be held up there right there those two holes no more markers a zillion markers here this one needs a hole here this one needs a hole here let's do those two and then Me those two, and then when that's there, there, and it can be those two, and hopefully, this will be this will be perfect. See, that's what was missing there. Chain mail. All right, let's get these holes drilled. Uh, should I center punch them? It's always a good idea. Not always. It is a good idea sometimes. Ooh. Now all the uh, drill bit stuff will fall into the chain mail and get stuck. And the drill bit stuff is called chips. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. What do we have for him, Johnny? We got him a chip in the eye. Just kidding. 
No trips in the eyes, please. I don't want any sharp edges on this. Inside or out, because if there's a sharp edge on it, that will wear through the nylon eventually. Oh look, I found some chips. You know why they call it a cold chisel? Because it's cold. It's freezing in here. Look at that. Never needed. do before I do that I have a couple pieces of brass that's supposed to be going with this I'm gonna go grab them I will leave you right here don't move I'll be right back I've got them right inside there we go Got them back. I can put this back now. Whoa! Oh. Sorry about the camera moving. I gotta hear this. They said if I can incorporate these into the helmet, that I should. I don't know, but they look like solid brass. Pretty sure they are. A helmet piece. This is another helmet piece. How would I put this one on? This piece can just go right in here. I could cut the top. I don't even know. How to attach this. I'm sure, there's a thousand ways. You know what? Let's put this one on for sure. Right here. In front of the other nose. Mm, maybe not that. That looks pretty. Now I know what I want to do. I'm going to flatten the nose. Put the chainmail behind it. Put the chainmail right behind it. So the chainmail goes between this and that. I'm going to put in two holes. I'm going to put two holes in this. I'm going to put one first through this and the helmet. Hmm. By eye now, remember, so that it looks straight. Oh, that feels like solid brass. I'm gonna 
be a problem then. There's some manufactured marks or something on it. Uh, I think this is going to turn out just nicely. Chain mail underneath it. I can hammer it down a little bit. I'm going to drill into this. I'm using a small drill bit first because it's brass. And the small drill bit's already in the drill. concentration here. Come on. Don't overheat. drifted a bit. Dang it. And that's like 100% my fault for not having a drill press. This is a little thing I'm doing here. You can't even see it. Here we go. Look, watch. So I have drilled one hole slightly off, but because I started with a smaller hole, I'm actually going to like saw down one side of the hole. I moved, I moved the hole more center. So when I drill the proper size hole, it will use the surface. We'll use that side of the circle and this side of the circle to center itself. That's not too bad. Whoa. Excuse me. Excuse. Excuse me. I don't know how that other piece can go on this helmet. Those pieces are easy. Uh decorative or accent pieces can be put on cheeks easy there's only one it's okay i will not get hurt doing this i will not get hurt doing this no that's too bad. this blade is burnt Wait, one day, maybe I'll buy a drill press. I don't know where I would put it, that's all. That's a quarter of the way through. I don't like it. I think I might be heating it up too much with these dull bits. I'm just going to switch to a new one real quick. 
because I have 7,000 of them. I we will go and get another drill bit. size drill bit I'm supposed to be using. What size were those? 730 seconds? Yeah, 730 seconds. Well, that's easy. Got lots of those. 730 seconds on a 3 8 rivet. That's what I'm putting in. I'm putting in a steel rivet. Just cuz. Let's go. Oh no, too sharp, too sharp. There is a good practice rule that you can't follow when using a hand drill to do something like this. And it's don't start your drill bit while touching the material. <laughs> oh, I need this drill, this, uh, this to be functional right now. I need this vice to be functional right now. Ah, uh, it's too sharp. Lightly drilling. Woo! That was a fun one. Here we go. Let's try again. I just need it to work. Oh, yeah. Oh, that went pretty good. I'm quite happy that it didn't hurt me. Alright, let's put this on here. I have a feeling that the nose, at some point in time in this helmet's life, is going to go bye bye. Or get bent a little bit. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Who needs a transfer punch when you can use a Sharpie? Mmm, Sharpies. The most delicious smelling markers on the planet. That's right, 730 seconds, because if you drill it the exact size, without drilling through the first hole into the second, it will be harder to line up. Okay, that's the easy part. When I was a kid, we had Nintendo, Super Nintendo. And if no one was there to play with me, I would have to play by myself. And I would use both controllers. And uh, I would get the controllers tangled up like this. You can see it, my angle, you can't even see it. My angle grinder is tangled up here. All this mess with my other drill that is broken. And then with my current drill and my angle grinder. So the three are just all entangled with each other. And I, that, maybe my air compressor line is in here too. And my little portable welder thingy, if you call it that. And I do. What are you doing? Just drilling a giant, massive, gaping hole in the front center of the helmet. You know what you're doing? No. All right. I messed up the wires. Put my drill down. Here we go. Okay. Oh yeah. One of the holes lines up. <laughs> the other one doesn't line up at all. <laughs> yes, it does. They both line up perfectly. But it's just funny the way it looks. Hmm. Brass on the helmet. Okay. Oh, 
Hi. Forgot to take off the little burr. Ugh. Little burr off the helmet. Here we go. Little burr off of this rivet hole. This one's started. I'm gonna put the other one in while it's all loose. So I can put the other one in. This one on. That's on nice. Oh, that looks pretty. That looks a pretty. It's still a little loose, but I'm going to fix this. I swear I'm gonna fix it. Which one's loose? The one closest to me. The brass will smush over time upon multiple beatings. And make things loose again. Brass rivets are not as strong as steel rivets. They're more malleable than the softer metal. So, let's see. Got those holes drilled. Is this nose on? Oh, come on. Come on! Everything is so hard. Talk about discouragement. Some people probably don't put full chainmail drapes on it. I've seen a lot that just go around the back. Um, there's a guy in London that has one. He has a plate chainmail armor. And there are places where there is chainmail, and in between, there are places where there is plates around it. It looks good, but he only has chainmail on the back of his helmet. So, you to go over this one time and stay. <sighs> Thank you. Never talked so much to a helmet before. Sometimes helmets get names for that kind of nonsense. Okay, I need to sit back down and start more threading. Sorry for the boring parts. Where's my seat? Um, crochet needle, where's my thread? Here it is. Outside? Oh, yeah, that's right. From the club. I forgot. From the club. There we go. Okay, that's there. This is here. Kids are home from the club. I didn't take a nap, I swear. 
Hi. And you have some cake. Cake. Leftover cake. Please. Cake? Can we? Yes, of course you can have some cake. Yeah. Mom's not home. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I don't know if I need my uh, crochet needle here. I think what I need to do is just put one hand inside. Oh, yeah. And we're going to find the exit. Oh, look at this. No way. No way. This is the home stretch here. I know it. It's not like painting a painting. This is the, the absolute home stretch here for me in this helmet. I feel like it's been so long. This journey has been exhausting, but not in a bad way. Oh no. All right, we'll do this. Then I can cut this side. Make it super easy for them to fix if they ever need to. What a really nice chainmail too. Um, getting down to it here. Look at that. Really, all that difficultiness that I had early on making this helmet is probably just my own self-doubt, I think. But started it so long ago. I have plans on finishing up the helmet that I made for myself that I don't like. A friend of mine somewhat encouraged me to try some new things. And I'm going to do it. I swear I'm going to do it. Here we go. I wonder if Lotharo would let me play their music. They're a band from Hamilton. Look at that. Maybe I should reach out. Be like, hey guys, can I play your music in the background? They're a metal band, which would be kind of funny because I'm working with metal. Hey guys, can I play your music in the background of my YouTube show? where I make things out of metal. <laughs> Wonder if they would like that. Doubt that they watch this. I don't know. I don't know, get stuck in the knot. Thank you. There we go. Now let's tie, where should I tie this? Around here. Maybe one last time. Around the chainmail itself. There we go. There we go. Come on. Look at that. Check it out. See where the chains fall. There. The chains fall on these two. Okay. I feel like I think I don't feel as excited as I was hoping I'd be at this point. 
quite satisfied with this. Yeah, the helmet I want to make for myself is in my shed, or shed. It's in my trailer, which I use as a shed. And it fits fine enough, I guess. But, um, new helmet, I don't like the feel of it. I don't like, um, the chin strap. Because I have been spoiled with the greatest chin strap ever, I'm going to use a new chin strap. The new chin strap I'm going to make is going to be just like my old one. And it will never break. Just like my old one never broke. And I will feel comfortable in it. And I will feel safe. And I will kick some butt. I made it when I was trying to teach myself how to just do the basics in chasing and repose. So it's got some figures on it. Happy I made it when I did for myself instead of learning how to do it on someone else's things. Because then I wouldn't have those things. I still have that helmet when I was learning. I don't have to say I used to have this thing. It would be really nice to be able to fight in that. And uh, people are like, this is me. I made this helmet. Actually, I did wear it at Penzik in the States once. And I got stopped a lot and people were asking me. And then one dude actually, one dude stopped me and was like, hey, is that this guy? I'm like, uh, no. And he's like, who made your helmet? I was like, I did. And then he literally shook his head and walked away. Like, you didn't believe me. I'm like, okay. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs> Which is fine. I make helmets. But the, it's hard to say that and then have people take you seriously or ask more questions of you if you want to talk about it. If you're wearing, like, a big rust bucket. So I kind of want to have a nicer helmet. But I like my helmet. It was uh, given to me by somebody who helped me out when I first started fighting. You know. Now I help out other people. Actually, that was probably the best thing that happened uh, early on. Somebody just gave me a helmet. All I did, I, I traded them for some metal. And... Uh, He was super happy that I gave him free metal, and he gave me a helmet and says, here, you know how to make things out of metal. Make things out of metal with me. And then he showed me how to make a spanging helm. What did I do? No, he didn't. He showed me how to make plates for a spanging helm. The top corner plates on the helmet like that. Like these plates, actually. Uh, not these ones. And not those ones. <laughs> I lied. The triangle ones that everyone makes, they're triangular. These ones I had sheared in a triangle shape because I knew if I dished them, they'd have this nice line and then I'd be able to weave or whatever I want after the fact. Look at this. Let's go back over here for a minute. Better to break while it's right in front of me than after delivery. Huh. That's all right, eh? There's the back. There's the front. Won't you check the visibility? With padding, this helmet would never fit me, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I can see 
I can breathe. It looks like it's got eye holes. The nose is actually the widest part of the visibility here. Tiny vision. Actually, it's nice. I can see through the chainmail pretty good. So I'm glad that the chainmail didn't take up too much of the space. Ah. Oh, yeah. Somebody come and get this helmet. There's one last piece of sea boat putting on here, but I don't think I'm going to. I was asked to put it on again five years ago. This piece. I don't, e I don't even know how to attach it safely. If there was a thing on it, I could. Right. What about a piece? Nope. That's not going to work. I think I think I need to be satisfied with this. I think I think I need to stop. I think I need to stop making this helmet. I think it's good. Dun it. Dun 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 it. Nope. What, 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 what? Let's see if I can find. I have a punch with the thing on it. With the letter. With the envelope. Let's see. It's gotta be here. It's gotta be here somewhere. Just maybe. It's a pretty light helmet too. Wonder where they'll be next. Yeah. I gotta be satisfied with this one. Ah. Uh Yes. Yes, you can. Okay, bye. So, I'm going to say that's done. I got to give this to him. And I don't have anywhere in my garage to put helmets when they're done. I kind of just like throw them around places. <clears throat> Delivering helmets is always fun. Now I'm nervous. Even though I felt like pretty good, I'm satisfied this is finished. I'm kind of nervous if they don't like it. It's, I question myself too much here. Let's put this somewhere. Uh, somewhere here, out of the way. Needs a bag, needs a nice bag. I can stay there. This is something I started for myself. Never even got around to finishing this. Another old piece of armor I had seen online. I wanted to protect my chest a little bit more. Apparently, I have almost nothing. And occasionally, I get hit in the chest. Let's see what I got. Essentially new. So currently, this this is all I have for chest armor. Yeah, just fell off of me. And then shoulder armor. This is the entirety 
of my upper armor kit. This here are shoulders, my neck. But this thing, would, and, and I get hit in the flesh all the time. This thing would probably offer me quite a bit more protection on a gorget. And it's much larger, but these shoulder pads are too big. Let's see what I got. See, it would be six times as much armor down here. I could almost wear them all together. I don't know. I wouldn't do that. So I'm debating whether or not I just put the gorget on the neck piece. This even has like a back flap, which I have not had ever. Let's see. Yeah, I want to cut and stitch the shoulders. If I'm going to keep the shoulders, I'm going to make it sure they're, they're not pointed up. That they'll be rounder. That would be nice. That's one. Let's put that with the leg armor. Whoa! All my armor's fixed. I actually took the time to fix it all. I do have a kidney belt I have not started on. This is the leather, which is now like $200 in leather, but it wasn't at the time. Think skinny? Oh, so skinny. It's taller than my existing one. And I have not settled. It's taller at the back too. I'm not settled on uh, like what I want to put on it decorative wise which is kind of the only hold up on that one I know what I want to do buckles on one side instead of two I have buckles on both sides of my existing one I can let it out even bigger maybe I'll put buckles on both sides nah I've got lots of buckles let's do both sides I do need to make another basket out this week I said I would or fix up another one of mine. Got an old stainless one that needs help. Yeah, I could do that maybe. Uh, so, but I think I'm done for tonight. I finished that helmet. It's been like five years. I think four, five, maybe five, maybe four. Yeah, then I gotta put that tiller back on my boat. And then after the tiller, well, I got to put the boat in the water. The boat motor, got to put that on the boat. <sighs> got to open the pool, got to fix the hot tub, got to shave. Maybe I can, maybe I can shave. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for watching. Have a good night. Okay, bye.